Welcome back to Podcast 56 of 2019. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can tweet me at OB Kiev. Tweet us at The Odds Breakers. Follow us on social media, slash The Odds Breakers. This episode is being brought to you by MyBookie.ag. For a 50% sign-up bonus, please visit MyBookie. Use the promo code The Odds Breakers. Terms and conditions apply. If you would like... To help us out with our costs, we would love to help you out. Please visit theodsbreakers.com, click shop, and become a member. For seventeen ninety nine a month, you'll get my plays and premium plays before the line moves. For $2 more, you can have all that and become a patron subscriber and get the podcast a little bit early. If nothing else, please visit theodsbreakers.com and become a free picks newsletter subscriber. Well, I'll tell you, the free picks have been doing great. Uh, three and zero in football, NFL football, but well, we lost the teaser, I guess. So th- uh, three and one, and then the uh, college was at two and one from those plays. Overall, we were up in the NFL a little bit and down in college a little bit, so kind of treading there, but still up for the year. Plenty of units, so that's very good. I'm still on vacation at Mission Beach, San Diego, California, but. Wanted to find a little bit of time to give you out our plays, or my plays anyway, for the college football week eight and, or sorry, week seven and NFL week six. Also going to go over some of the sharp line movement for you as well. But like we said before, there's no guest. Not going to go over the full card like I do in the NFL a little bit. We, we uh, just wanted to make sure we gave you some of our plays, a dumbed-down version of our podcast. Everything back to normal next week. So um, why don't we just get started here for the sake of time. I'm looking at Florida versus LSU starting with college LSU's laying minus 13 over under is at 54 and a half LSU's been scoring a lot of points as a matter of fact they average 54 a game themselves 54 Florida has been winning off pure defense but neither team has really been challenged yet I mean I guess Auburn yeah so Florida had Auburn and uh, Texas doesn't have a great defense that LSU played since Joe Brady arrived at LSU, this team's been playing at a wicked pace of 78 plays per game. And that doesn't factor in the fourth quarters where they're just able to run the clock out. So the true pace is definitely higher than that. Florida, on the other hand, has played slowly, but they will have to pick up the pace at LSU in order to compete with LSU. LSU leads the nation in points per game. As we pointed out at 54, they are fifth in yards per play at 7.7. Florida, not too shabby. They average 32 points per game, 6.6 yards per play themselves. And they have a better quarterback now with uh, Kyle Trask at the helm. And he's going to play this weekend. It was a little bit questionable, but he's probable now. LSU also doesn't have a great defense. They rank 76th in efficiency. That's pretty low. They allow 20 points per game on on an easy schedule. I think Florida is going to be able to put up at least 28 to 30 maybe even maybe even more uh but i the point is i see this game gonna be some scoring here i see some big points being scored i like this over 64 and a half as a matter of fact if i was setting this line it should be around 60 we're gonna take that for a two-star premium play next game i want to get into with a big 10 we got penn state versus iowa four and a half points over under is at 42 and a half here's the game that should prove me right or wrong about Penn State if you heard what I've been talking about I definitely had to upgrade them during the season and especially after that Maryland game but they still haven't played anyone their only road game was Maryland and now they have to face a pissed off Iowa team with a great defense Iowa ranks 30th in defensive yards per play at 4.8 and third at points allowed at 8.8 they have played teams like Michigan and Iowa State the best team Penn State has played was Pittsburgh, and they were out that game. They should have lost that game if it wasn't for a coaching error on the other side. Penn State's D ranks very high, even though they haven't played anybody. 
So, um, I, you know, I, I'm not going to discount that. They do have a very good D, but um, Iowa needs this game bad since Wisconsin beat Michigan. Iowa needs bounce back. The low total here at 42 and a half screams to take the points. I'm taking the four and a half. My power rings have Iowa minus one, actually. Take the home dog. Love this play. 2.5 star, by the way. Sprinkle that money line. Oklahoma versus Texas. Texas is at plus 11. Over-under is at 75. Another shootout here. Texas is desperate to run the table in hopes to regain their playoff hopes. Oklahoma is on a revenge tour with Jalen Hurts and uh, has done pretty well, actually. All right, the last college game we are going to give out is Oklahoma versus Texas. Texas plus 11. Over-under is at 75. Another shootout here. Texas is very desperate to run the table in hopes to regain their playoff hopes. Um, They didn't exactly get destroyed by LSU if you saw that game. Oklahoma, they're on a revenge tour with Jalen Hurts, and it's a revenge of him because he feels shorted at Alabama, and he's done very well. But there's a reason that he was in Alabama, in my opinion, and this game's going to tell it all. While this is a very high total, it also indicates that Texas is going to score here, too. Oklahoma hasn't played a top 60 team in uh, defensive efficiency, not at all, okay? That was an interesting stat I looked up, and um, they also rank uh, 64th in opponent yards per play at 5.5. Bad schedule and still allowing yards. The Longhorns haven't played a hard schedule really either, but, (laughs) I mean, at least they played Oklahoma State LSU and uh, West Virginia okay so West Virginia is not that great but the other two are I mean if you've watched these games in the past Texas has always played well against Oklahoma always Tom Herman was eight two and one as a dog before the LSU loss and he barely lost that spread Uh, he lost the closing line more than anything He's 8-3-1 and one as a dog. I'm still going with this. I love Tom Herman here. I think Texas keeps this game close, and I think there's a very good chance they win this as well. So this could be a sprinkle opportunity as well, like it for two stars, um, and go ahead and book it. Now it's time for a little NFL Week 6 free plays. We got Detroit going to Green Bay. Green Bay's laying 4.5 points. Over under is at 46 and a half. So huge wins for the Packers at Dallas last week. They got me as a play on that one. But this is just another Jason Garrett coaching deficiency bonehead going against a young Matt Matt LaFleur there. The Packers ran all over this team in the beginning, which made them able to, you know, control the game, set up play action, put the Cowboys in a desperate pass mode, forcing Dak three picks. You know, uh, that didn't help either. Dak had some bad play, but um, this is going to be harder to accom- harder to accomplish, I think, against a rested Lions team coming off a bye. This is kind of a letdown spot for the Packers. Detroit played a very challenging schedule. Kansas City, they beat the Chargers, they beat the Eagles. Okay, um, they should have beat the Cardinals, but just kind of gave that all the way up to a tie. But that was the first game of the year. Throw it out. They're battle tested. Sit nicely in the division. This is their first division game. They're going to want to make a splash. The biggest thing here for me is that Detroit ranks above Green Bay in net yards per play by .4. That's pretty pretty good size right there. Uh, the, the Lions could easily be 4-0 right now. They could. Uh, if they quit blowing games, I think they pull their heads together here. This should be a three-point spread. The t- Lions team is rested. Coming off the bye, take the Lions uh, plus 4.5 all the way down to New York Giants versus the New England Patriots. Patriots lane 17 over under is 42. So this number is big, very big. But the Giants are not the worst team in the NFL. And uh, that makes this to- th- that makes the spread should be around 14, not 17. I, I don't think the Patriots is going to try to gain margin here. They're also without their kicker, Goskowski. He's injured. Uh, New England's kind of in coast mode, right? While the Giants, they're fired up about Daniel Jones. And, you know, they, they, they want to try to jump back into the NFC East. I think this is a statement game for them. They're going to want to try to do what they can to beat the Patriots. They're probably not going to do it, obviously, but uh, they think they keep it closer than 17. My power rings have the Patriots by 14 or 14 and a half at the max. It's kind of around that area. Um, even if the 
Patriots pull ahead by double digits. I can see a garbage touchdown from New York. I like this play. I think the Giants have a good shot here to uh, keep this game closer than 17, possibly even within the single digits. All right, we have Atlanta versus Arizona. Arizona plus two and a half, over-unders at 51 and a half. This game is all about the spot here. Arizona just got their first win in Cincinnati, and now it's time to come back to earth. I mean, you know, let down spot central. A- Atlanta, brutal one and four start, and they need to get the W here. Or else you can start uh, sending Dan Quinn on his uh, the same ship as Jay Gruden got this week. Um, I know that Atlanta's uh, a bit beat up on defense, but it's not as bad as Arizona's injury report. Uh, Matt Ryan is a bad road quarterback, but he's good in a dome. I mean, he's coming to Arizona State Farm Stadium. He's going to play in a dome. That should help him out. It's going to make him feel like he's home. Uh, Plus, not a great home field advantage for Arizona, as we all know. Lots of different fans out there. Atlanta has the most... uh, Net, well, not the most, but they have a nice 0.5 yards uh, net play yards per play difference here. So 0.5 is pretty decent here. And uh, they've had the sixth hardest schedule in football. The Cardinals, their schedule ranks 24th. Okay, so I like the disparity there. I like the spot here. I like the dirty birds under the three, but take them at minus 2.5. I like this for about two stars right here atlanta minus two and a half so the teaser that i'm looking at um and now i i'm one in four in teasers okay so i think i'm done i I don't know what's going on here teasers were so awesome last year and now they absolutely are garbage um a lot of people getting beat on them and i think there's just been a lot of weird blowouts so um my teasers are lean right here because i'm not sure if i'm taking it and so i'm not going to count it if i win it but tampa bay I'm going to tease them to probably plus eight, most likely. And it, it, the partner would be Tennessee, uh, all the way to plus eight and a half. I like going past the key numbers. I like Tampa at home against Carolina. I like Tennessee in a desperation spot against Denver. They, they're kind of, you know, losing some games here. They need to get right back <laughs> back in the uh, in the mix of things as well. So. Um, uh, I think they only won one game. So uh, I like going with these two teams going past the key number. Tampa lost last week as well against the Saints. So this is a good spot to back them at least on a teaser. All right, now it's time for the sharp side of the force. Sharp blind movement for college and NFL football. And I'm going to get started right away. Dave. We have New Mexico from plus four to plus three and a half. Is a home game against Colorado State. 35% difference between number of tickets and amount of money. Uh, we have Oregon getting some uh, action. Minus 19 and a half all the way to minus 21 hosting Colorado. 30% difference. That's a big number for uh, a Colorado team that beat ASU. Not too bad of a Colorado team there. Um, also beat Nebraska, my, by the way. That thing keeps going up. I might be on Colorado. Uh, we got Louisville. Sharp money on Louisville, plus six and a half. Nineteen percent of the tickets are on Louisville, but fifty-seven percent of the money is on Louisville. So that shows you that the the money's favoring them with the dog there. Uh, we have sharp money on Georgia Tech, plus seventeen and a half against Duke. Forty-one percent difference there. Sharp money on Purdue, plus three against Maryland. Ugh, Maryland, they've been so bad last uh, in the last few games here. And uh, both quarterbacks are completely out, I think, for these teams, and uh, they're on their backups. But Pigrome is not too bad at Maryland, so um, I'm not so sure I like that sharp movement. Let's see here. Hawaii, plus 13 down to plus 12. 29% difference at Boise State. Ugh. Boise State's got a defense. I'm staying away from that one. Sharp money on New Mexico State at Central Michigan. Central Michigan's quarterback just got suspended, plus 12.5 down to plus 10.5. Probably still some value there, 20% difference. We have Ole Miss at Mizzou. Sharp money's on Ole Miss at plus 12, a 35% difference. And Tennessee, sharp money at plus seven, hosting Mississippi State, a 40% difference. I kind of like that one. This is a spot that Tennessee needs to get back in. 
the swing of things here. Sharp money on Arkansas at Kentucky, plus seven down to plus six and a half. Um, oh, Arkansas. Oh, I don't know if I can back down. Sharp money on South Florida at plus six and a half against BYU. A 38% difference there. I can't bet on South Florida there. I'd rather bet on BYU. Um, sharp money on Michigan State at plus 10 and a half at Wisconsin. Oh, my Badgers. I'm, I'm watching this line. I'm just going to tell you, I made the line eight via my power ratings, but Michigan State could be beat up coming into this game that they faced Ohio State. It's not a greatest spot to back them. But then again, you know, maybe maybe uh, maybe they're fired up to try to get a big win. Probably a stay away game or take the under. And that the under is like 40 points or something. All right. Sharp money on Charlotte. Plus six and a half down to plus five at FIU. A 36% difference. Charlotte. Kind of like them there too. FIU's been garbage. Sharp money on USC at plus 11 at Notre Dame. Probably because of the rivalry spot. I'm not betting on Clay Helton. Sharp money on San Diego State at minus four hosting Wyoming. Sharp totals. All right, we have to be at least 30% difference for me to cover it or dual action. Some dual action on the Colorado State over 66.5 at New Mexico. Looks like Louisville at Wake Forest. Sharp money on the under 64.5. Sharp dual action. Well, no, actually just... 43% 43% of the tickets is on the over for the Navy Tulsa game, but 97% of the money over 54. Um, kind of like that play there. Uh, should be some points scored this game. Let's see here. Moving down. We have sharp money on Kent State over 57 at Akron, a 34% difference. Sharp money on the Baylor under. Texas Tech at Baylor under 58, a 24% difference. Didn't quite make the uh, threshold. I guess there's some dual action there. Baylor's not that fast team we used to know. And then sharp money on the San Jose State at Nevada over. 54% of the tickets are on the over 58.5, but 94% of the money. That's a pretty good difference. Sharp money on the over North Texas at Southern Miss, 58.5. Sharp money on the under Charlotte at FIU, under 61. And that's there you have it. That's your sharp totals for the NCAA. Uh, one more. There's dual action on Clemson. 79% of the tickets are on the under 60 playing Florida State, but 92% of the money are on the under 60. I think it's because of the way Clemson played against North Carolina. They're probably going to pull it together and try to shut out Florida State. We'll see what happens that game. That should be a fun one to watch. Sharp NFL. We have sharp money on the Tampa Bay Bucks plus two and a half hosting Carolina. 21% difference between ticket total and money. We have sharp money on Houston from plus eight and a half all the way down to plus five against the Kansas City Chiefs. 20% difference. Sharp money on the Jacksonville Jaguars minus one against the New Orleans Saints. Holy cow, there's a 36% difference there. Gardner Minshew hosting the Saints. Hmm, That's a tough one. Uh, Sharp money on the New York Jets, plus nine to plus seven and a half, hosting Dallas. Quarterback must be coming back. Uh, Denver, sharp money on Denver, minus one to minus two, hosting Tennessee. And uh, 33% difference there. Tennessee's a desperate team, but... uh, Denver just had that win finally. Sharp NFL totals. And we got the under. New Orleans Saints at Jacksonville. Under 44 and a half. A 42% difference. Kind of like that one. Sharp money on the over. Detroit at Green Bay. Over 47. A 29% difference. 
Sharp money on the under Seattle at Cleveland, under 47, a 35% difference. There you have it, my friends. Hope you enjoyed this quick podcast. Sorry we did not have more for you. Next week, we are back to our normal selves. Thank you all so much for listening. I appreciate all you listeners very much. Have a fantastic weekend watching the games, and go get some more.